Hello friends, Candace B here. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I always appreciate it. You guys already know that, but thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with little old me. I hope wherever you are, it's nice and sunny and you're enjoying the summer weather. Today is about 27 degrees where I am in the greater Toronto area. So that's amazing. Definitely bike riding weather, you know, going on a walk, getting ice cream. It's just good vibes, you know. I always am in a better mood when it's nice and sunny, obviously. I know a lot of people can relate to that. But today we're going to be doing a quick back testing session. I'm going to be back testing the NAS 100. I think it's been quite a while since I've done that. So, we are going to do that, you know. The goal for me is to you know, identify, look for and identify high probability setups and patterns that uh, more times than not usually, you know, end in profitability and in a winning trade. And so honestly, the best thing you can do is to, you know, practice, get your eyes used to trying to find those setups and just do it over and over again. And so that once you're in the, obviously the live market, you can apply that and hopefully identify those patterns in the real time and and make a lot of money. So <laughs> that being said, uh, let us get into this video. Okay, so as you can see, we have NASDAQ 100 on the screen right here. And um, we are going to just choose a random time frame to, not time frame, a random day to back test. Um, I'm going to be back testing the New York session and um, usually, I trade around 10 a.m. So after 9.30, so I'm going to be looking for setups during that time. And my goal is to look for setups or be able to um, catch, you know, 30 to 40, maybe less points, um, depending on the time. But I don't want to spend much time in the trades. So I want to make sure that I am being intentional with which trades I'm taking and being okay with not trading on certain days or skipping a day. Okay, so I'm going to click hide and then I'm going to press the replay button and this is what I do just to choose a random day. So let's stick with 2024. Um, we'll do maybe March time, middle of March. All right. And then I'm going to remove the hidden feature, bring back those candlesticks, and we're going to see where we're at. Okay, so I chose um, Wednesday, March 13th, but it's already at the end of the session. So we're going to just fast forward to Thursday. Okay. Thursday should have gone down to the lower time frame. All right, so we are on um thursday march the 14th so that's where we are going to start and um like i said i would like to be looking for setups um after 9 30 around 10 a.m and unfortunately with back testing um i can't go back and see you know what the stocks were doing on this day on cnbc.com but we will just stick with price action and see what was happening then. If anything, I can always, you know, bring up Forex Factory as well and see what was happening on that day. Actually, let me do that. Okay, so we had some 8.30 red folder news. So obviously we see the results of that. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. We see that that's already happened. Um, price dropped very strongly. Um, this was about from high to low dropped about 58 points just with that 830 candlestick and pulled back and now it looks like it's continuing to the downside so i'm on the five minute right now on the five minute it looks like we did actually break bullish structure as you can see during um during the asian session slash london session price was moving up and then um we've now broken that structure right here i would say um and the reason for that is that the last um, high here, some people can also say up here, but my eyes gravitated towards here. Once price broke below this area, that's when, oops, uh, this area here, that's when I, that's what I would look at to see that, you know, structure was broken. 
So let us um, clean up the charts. I'm just going to go to um, a higher time frame to see what it's looking like. Uh, so we're definitely moving down. The one hour is definitely bearish. Um, the candlesticks are closing below the close of the last candlesticks, uh, below the low of the last candlestick. So we're moving down pretty nicely. Um, not to say we want to right away jump on that momentum because it could be, you know, coming to an end. It could be wanting to pull back. So uh, in my opinion, I think the best thing to do to look for those, you know, profitable areas or the high probability setups is to kind of wait for price to get to a zone and see what it does from there. Supply and demand zone. So let us see what happens. And mind you, this is before 930. So we got to wait anyways. So let's keep track of this. 855, 9, 905, 10, 20. So we're still moving nicely to the downside. Let's see what 930 does. 25 and 30. Whoa. All right. So as you can see, price spiked down, broke the previous lows here, but then it did not, it wasn't able to sustain that level. It wasn't able to close down here. So it pulled back up so for me, you know, if it were to have closed there, that would have been a good indication that the bears were still want, uh, having momentum. You know, there was still the ability to push down, but there's something here. Uh, stopping price. So I would consider this just because there's so many taps to the zone or this area, I would consider this a zone. Um, and again, if I just go up to the, the one hour and see, oh, it dropped all the way. Okay. So the one hour kind of exposed what happened. So let's just uh, push down because, or let's just um, keep pushing forward here because we know it's going to drop. We'll get to, yeah, that was what we just saw on the, on the one hour. So dropped pretty strongly at 945. Did anything happen at 945? There was no news. Interesting. Well, at this point, um, we just have to wait now to see if price will you know, if price wants to come back into this area and retest it, what it wants to do, or if it's going to just continue down Let's zoom out because we also have to be looking to see if there's another area where it would want to get to. Um, there is this area here, but this is a very strong drop for me. I don't know where I would have entered anyways, because I would be looking at this area as somewhere that I didn't want to be caught up in if I were to be in shorts, but it pushed right by it in this case. Doesn't usually, doesn't always happen um, in this case. Okay, so now we're at 10 a.m. So let's see what happens if we're gonna pull back, but we see the bulls coming in a little bit. Let's see, we might get um, another zone forming. Oh, price is coming all the way back up. Possibly. Let's see. What time is it? 10.20. 25. Um, this is why, you know, uh, so many times I have taken a trade after just seeing price do something like this where it pushes down and it's obviously just an impulsive move. But in my head, I'm like, I need to catch it. I need to go with it you know, and then I end up getting, <laughs> for whatever reason, I always get in at the bottom of the move and I'm thinking it's going to continue down and obviously then it reverses. So definitely a psychological thing um, goes to show that trading is a very much a psycho psychological um, thing too. So let's see what happens here. Okay. We retested this area. That's very nice. So now at this point, I'm wanting to see how it's going to react now because price, you know, pretty textbook where, you know, like I said, we broke previous, um, we broke the previous bullish structure and price started making its way down. It ended up, you know, consolidating or just tapping into this area. 
which essentially created a zone. It ended up breaking past the zone below it and it came back up now to tap it. So now we want to see what it's going to do to the zone. If it has a problem um, breaking above it, I would be looking for shorts um, and kind of going from there. So let's see what happens. This is uh, 1030. Okay, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful bearish candle. Um, and when we zoom in, we see that the candle is almost, almost engulfing essentially. It did break above the high of this previous candle and the low of this previous candle. Um, so uh, I do feel comfortable entering a short position here. I would want to see where my stop loss is though because um, ideally I want it to obviously be above the previous the high of the previous candlestick and we're going to keep it modest here. I want to aim for a one to one. I do feel comfortable with about a 30, a 35 um, pip or point <laughs> 35 point. Oh, sorry. Just kick the camera. 35 point um, stop loss. And we're looking for a one to one. So we're looking for price just to come back into this area here. Let me Map it out, just this area here where this doji candle was created. So we'll see what happens in this case. Either way, we are going to be okay with the outcome. So let's push for it. And again, uh, this is 1035. So it'd be 1040 essentially that I was a trade. Beautiful. Oh, it came right. Oh, I thought it was going to come back up. And I think it's going to hit. It. Oh my gosh, no. Okay, there we go. We got it. We got it right here. As you can see, price did tap into my take profit before pulling right back up. So we did get a 37 pip or point. I keep saying 37. I keep saying pips. Uh, we got a 37 uh, point gain right here, which is great. Um, you know, depending on your lot size, this could be $37, dollars $3, $370, $3,700. Um, it could be a different figure based on just what lot size. You know, obviously if you use a 0.4, to do 37 times 0.4 stuff like that um and yeah very nice i'm really noticing that being more modest with my um with with the points like my risk to reward not being so focused on getting a one to two or one to three especially on the nas 100 it, it works out better for me. I'm realizing that slowly, but surely. And I've, I've realized that through back testing and forward testing. So this is that kind of another affirmation or reaffirmation that it works. You know, we can do one-to-one, -one, especially when, you know, all of our, all of our, um, oops, especially when all of our confluences, you know, are matching up, are stacking up and we feel comfortable we feel confident. So I just need to be able to take these trades in real time, you know, see the setup and go forward from there. And whatever price does after, as you can see, price pushed back up right after it tapped into this area. Whatever it does after is none of our business <laughs> because we've gotten in and gotten out. So it could go up, it can go back down. Doesn't matter. So as you can see, it went back down, but we, this trade, I, it would have been from 1040 to 10:55, so 15 minutes. Let's do a visual exercise. Close your eyes. Imagine you are trading. You see this setup, the exact same one that I just took. You enter it, and 15 minutes later, you have $3,700, $3,700 in your account that you've just made in 15 minutes. I don't know how people can hate on day trading, on currency trading. I don't know how or on future trading, like just day trading in general. How do people hate on this? 15 minutes, $3,700. Risk is managed. No stress. Confluences add up. We're following the trend. Come on now. You, you can't, you can't hate on it. It's a beautiful, beautiful skill to have. Um, and it's worth putting in effort. Even if it takes years, it's worth it. Honestly, it really is. This is why I don't give up. This is why trading will always be something that I'm passionate about and I love and I continue to work towards just gaining that consistent profitability um, because it's just it's just worth it, you know. But enough of that spiel, enough of my my motivational 
<laughs> my motivational moment there. Let us go to Friday. I'm just going to um, move forward. Don't want to make this video too long, by the way. We'll just take one more trade for the sake of this video. All right, so we're on Thursday now. So let's go to Forex Factory, March 15th. Let's see what happened on March 15th, Friday. Um, had some 8.30 news, red folder news that was um, negative. There's some 9.15 news, eh, yellow and orange folder, but then there's red folder news at 10. So we should see that being reflected. Obviously not a benefit that we have when we're trading live. We don't see the results already of news, um, but for the sake of backtesting, that is what we have the benefit of. So 8.55, um, from the last trade, we have steadily remained below the zone that was mapped out. We have steadily remained below it. Price did pull back a little bit, a couple of times actually. Um, it pulled back here, little one here, didn't really get all the way up. And then we had that pull back here, um, back around the zone, but price has yet to break above it. So for me, um, still kind of mentally bearish. That's my uh, bias still, but we'll see what happens. So we're going to skip to 930. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, we are. Wow. Dang. Middle of March was really, really bearish. So this is 930. Hmm, 930 candle wasn't really that big of a deal. Well, it doesn't look like it. Doji was created, but it doesn't look like it was a huge, huge move. Sometimes that 930 candle is hectic. Um, okay, so let's see what happens from here. 40, 45, 50. Okay, we got that pullback. 55. Um, all right, so now I'm going to be looking a bit more intently. There is some sort of pullback here that these um, bullish candlesticks kind of showed. Uh, we are still bearish. I want to see if this is a strong enough little area or zone to hold um, for a little bit longer so we can get a one-to-one -one or not. Let me see what this 10 a.m. candle looks like. Beautiful. All right, so as you can see, if I zoom in, we have price closing below the low of um, this previous, these previous bullish candles. So this is a textbook um, pullback and then continuation. See that pullback. And now the intention is to go down. So we will be taking a short position um, right here. It would be for 9.05 or sorry, 10.05 AM. Uh, have to make sure my stop loss. Mm, wait, do I want my stop loss? I don't want my stop loss this big. So if I were to take this trade, I would need to make sure that I'm okay with um, about a 40, 45 point. Again, my goal is to just keep the stop loss above the high of the last candlestick. Um, just kind of for structure purposes, I feel like that makes the most sense. Um, I think it's okay for now just because um, my confluence, I feel confident in my confluences. The fact that, you know, it was such a strong bearish move and then we have that pullback and it wasn't impulsive for me. If I were to see an impulsive candlestick, especially on the five minute, I would expect a larger pullback. Um, so because it looks like we're just continuing the momentum and everything's pretty structurally sound, we will take this short. And, um, if I have to cut my loss short, I can, or if I, if I, if my stop loss gets hit, it is what it is. So let's press forward. Beautiful. Oh, pull back. Fair enough. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm actually going to come out of this trade, um, right here or count it as a loss here. 33 points. Price did push down. As you can see, it pushed down beautifully. Only a couple points away from my stop loss, or some for, from my take profit, and then it pushed right back up. So I don't feel comfortable with how that looks. This happens, you know. This is part of part of trading. Um, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Even if it goes back down, 
whatever. All right, so it ended up going back up. I had a feeling it just wasn't a strong enough zone here. I'm okay with getting out early. Um, it's all good. It's all good. I'm glad I got out early and had the the um, intuition to do that. Trading takes intuition as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's difficult because... On one hand, I do want to make sure that I allow my trade to to play out. You know, if my stop loss gets hit, it gets hit. But at the same time, when I don't have full, full, full confidence, like there's one thing to have confidence and there's one thing to have, there's another thing to have confidence, you know, um, it's like italicized. <laughs> but um, I had confidence in this trade. I was okay with the risk either way, but I saw the opportunity to cut my loss short. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing to cut your loss short, manage your risk, and keep more money in the bank for yourself. You know what I mean? So um, definitely, definitely going to keep back testing this way um, for sure. Just looking for that one-to-one -one, uh, and then working my way up if I need to. But if one-to-one -one works, then I'm going to stick to it and um, go from there because, yeah, the, the NAS 100 it moves beautifully it's great and when you get those big moves it's amazing but um it's best to be able to just get in and out of the trade as soon as possible in my opinion for my mindset that's just what would work best for me so the goal is always to make sure that i'm looking for high probability setups profitable patterns and for sure, you know, following momentum or following the trend is definitely important. Making sure you map out, you know, zones, obviously using different time frames if you need to. Um, I know I stuck to more so the five minute time frame, but that's just because if I were to have gone, gone up to the higher ones, as you saw, um, it shows me more than what I need to see in that moment. So, but in, in obviously in real time, you know, you can use higher time frames. Um, the higher time frame zone that you have, the stronger that zone could be. So keep that in mind. And yeah, just reading candlesticks, looking at news, doing all the little things to make sure that it just it comes together nicely and that you can get a nice setup and you can win that setup. And if not, you manage your risk. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was a quick video. I don't know if it was because I talk so much, um, <laughs> but I hope this was helpful in some way for somebody. Um, you know, make sure you do back test. It's not just trading live you know you have to make sure that you're doing the work behind the scenes and um yeah it just increases your chances of being successful so thanks again for watching guys until we meet again i hope you have a beautiful amazing just exhilarating day week and life <laughs>